Hi, my name's Kim. I'm a licensed nationally certified East Asian medical provider and a Taoist practitioner. Are you wondering what 2024 might be like? I can tell you that question oh, has me filled with a little bit of hesitancy because the last few years have been not anything that I was expecting. And if I could, I would stand outside the door of 2024 and let the first few people walk through and just kind of see what happens to them before I step through. And here's the thing, 2023, that energy in 2023 was tempered by the water rabbit. So 2023, that year went so fast and there were things that were happening and it, they were just kind of doing these small little firecrackers to your right, to your left, in front of you, just little things blowing up all over the place or changing, I guess. Little things, big change. And by the end of the year, I was exhausted. And 2024 doesn't have something like the water rabbit to temper its energy. So let me tell you a little bit about astrology in the West and astrology in the East. So astrology in the West likes to be predictive. It likes to say this will happen. And astrology in the East likes to tell you what the environment is and what your risk could be so that you can make changes in order to better navigate that. So I'm going to give you a couple examples. Let's say it's snowing outside and you're in your dress shoes because you just got off work. And in Western astrology, it would say, hey, you're going to slip and fall. And you go out in your dress shoes and you slip and fall. Well, in Chinese astrology, it will say, hey, it's snowing outside. You might not want to wear your dress shoes outside. You might want to change to winter boots so that you don't slip and fall. So same situations happening, but in Chinese astrology, it likes to give you um, some ideas on what you could do differently or things that you might want to change a little bit. Another way of looking at energetics, the energetics that you're walking into in every year is personalities. So if you work, you know, you have some bosses that you like, and then you have some bosses where you're like, yeah, no, um, hard no on that one. And so when you're with the boss you like, you can be yourself. It, you're, it's much easier to interact with that person. And when you're around the boss that you don't like, it's really kind of stiff and kind of difficult. And you're always kind of watching yourself to make sure that, you know, you're don't get too much attention. And another way is of looking at that is teachers. You know, if you're in school, there's teachers you like and teachers that you don't like. And you always try to pick classes with teachers that you like because it's easier for you to interact with them, to relate to them, and to understand what they're saying. And when it's teachers that you don't like, you know, that's harder for you. And so you know, either you have to try harder, you have to work harder, something. That is what energetics are in Chinese meta, well, in Chinese astrology is. It's helping you understand what it is you're going to walk into. And then it will help you look at who you are so that you can understand where you might have some weaknesses and that kind of energy. So, you know, sometimes it'd be nice if you could get like a cliff notes of like all your bosses or all your teachers and a cliff notes for yourself so that you can go, oh yeah, oh, this one's this and this and this, and this one's this and this and this. Okay. And here I am. Oh, I need to do these things differently to, you know, make this an easier road for me. So what I'm going to talk about in this episode is what the energetics are of this year. 
And then the next episode, I'm going to talk about each of the different Chinese zodiac signs and how they can interplay in this year, what the pros and cons are, where they might find some risk and, you know, where they might want to change things. And then last, uh, in another episode, I want to do a special episode for Gen Z because I think there's some really, really neat things going on in this year that's really specific for you. Okay, so let's look at what the themes are. Let's look at what the energetics are. Let's look what the personality is for 2024. What's going to happen in 2024? Well, the energy in 2024, it's going to be just as active as 2023, but hopefully not as violent. So for some of us, it's going to be more disorienting though. And what's going to be the big theme is you're going to feel like you're being pushed. The energy it's just going to be pushing you through this year. You're going to want to stop and take a breath and that's not going to happen. It's always going to feel like something is going to be behind you, pushing you, keeping you moving. There's going to be this urgency to the energy. And this energy, it may feel like you have, like maybe you're a sheep. And all these cattle dogs are hurting you. So even when you're exhausted, these cattle dogs, they're going to be nipping at your heel, forcing you to go in the right direction. And I think that's one of the key themes of this next year is you are going to be herded into the right direction. So, okay, where are we going to be herded? There's going to be three big themes this next year. And if you can keep yourself aligned with these themes, you should be able to weather the turbulence of 2024 uh, reasonably well. So let's look at what these themes are. Humanity. So the first theme is going to be humanity. And over the past decade, working for and with humanity, that has been this growing theme. This year, the theme, it's going to get supercharged. It's going to be a year where ethics and doing the right thing is going to determine the success of your interactions with others. In the year of the dragon, to go against this theme may lead to things like legal troubles, firings, terminations, disillusions. So 2024, it's not a year where being really self-serving is going to get you, you're not going to get a pass on that this year. That's a big change, huh? The second big theme is going to be action. So this is a year where you're going to need to participate. You know, some years you can sit on the sidelines and watch and not in 2024. If you're not going to be moving with the energy, this energy, it's just going to pick you up and throw you around. If you don't participate, you may find that you're going to come out bruised and battered. So this year you need to participate. Okay, but how do you participate? Well, this isn't asking for big action. So in 2024, they don't need big action. This year is asking you to either focus on yourself or within your community. So here's the thing. Self-healing is always a good step. This year, many of us are going to be reevaluating who we are and why we do what we do. Any step that you can take to 
you know, put down some of your past or lay down some of the baggage you've been dragging around, that is going to be able to ripple through the world, creating this enormous change. The other way to participate is going to be within your immediate family or your immediate community. So this is what I mean when I say go small. In the big world, our immediate vicinity is so small it can't be seen. Yet this is where you're going to have your greatest ability to affect change. So if you can find ways to help humanity in your personal sphere of influence, not only will these actions flow forward, but your world will get a lot easier. So there's some thoughts and it's just an outline of what's going to be happening next year and what to take into consideration, what you want, might want to think about aligning yourself with. And uh, if you're not aligned with that, maybe you want to reevaluate where you're at. And then in the next episode, we'll just talk about the different elements and how they're going to be impacted by all this change. And then after that, I'll do a special episode for Gen Z. Okay, until next time, I will catch you on the other side.